You say, well, what does all this have to do with me? I've got some truths for you to ponder. You still with me today? I know I've been preaching a lot of Bible content. Here comes the application. Are you ready? Get ready. Here it comes, all right? The three truths to ponder. The first test that you have in life is to be faithful in natural things. A lot of people despise the fact that God has them doing something in some realm that it just seems like, well, you know, it's just the normal, natural things of life. Well, let me tell you, there's a lot of things in life that are natural things that have power to them. So let's talk about them for a moment. A lot of people look at their job and they go, well, it's just a job. Who cares? They don't really treat their job with the respect that they ought to because how many of you realize that job is important, all right? You're representative of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords on that job. Come on, somebody. And let me tell you, if you're faithful in your job, if you're faithful to do it to the best, someone's going to come by and they're going to notice who you are, what you do, how you act, and you're going to rise to the top. Come on. Amen. That job is incredibly important. Being faithful in the natural things of life is important. That's an area where God tests us. Dave Ramsey tells us that we're going to be tested in the area of our money. He tells us that if you'll save 10 to 15% of your money from the time you're 18 years of age, put it in the stock market, put it in a mutual fund, by the time you're 65, you're going to have a whole lot of money in there. Come on, somebody. You want to know why? Because you're being faithful in the natural things of money. Amen. Listen, these things are important to us. Amen. Another area that every parent wants to tell his child is this. Be faithful in the natural things things of your studies. It's not just algebra and geometry and chemistry and trigonometry and all of that stuff. It's a way to a better life. Do I got any parents that'll say amen? Amen. amen. Why? Because if you're faithful in the natural things, it opens up greater doors to other things and God can take you and move you into places that you would never have imagined that you would ever be. Come on. I'm just here to tell you that being faithful faithful in natural things is incredibly important in the kingdom of God. And I don't know of any church in America that doesn't want people to be saved. Do you got anybody here who says, I would really like to see some people give their life to Jesus? Come on. How many say, I want to see people born again in the house of God? Amen. That's an important thing. Well, let me tell you something. We've got to be faithful in the natural things in order for that to happen. You say, well, what's a natural thing? How about this? Learning how to be a friend. Learning how to make a friendship. Learning how to invite someone out for coffee. Learning how to listen. Learning how to help somebody else when they're going through a hard time. Learning how to be a true friend. Let me tell you something. True friends will win their, other, their friends to the Lord Jesus Christ. Let me tell you, it's important. And a lot of people say, well, man, I'd really like to heal the sick and cause the, cause the dead to get up out of the grave and all that. Let me tell you something. First of all, let's be faithful in the natural things. Amen? Let's make a friend for Jesus. Amen. Let's take our energy and our influence and our time and walk across the street and get to know the neighbors. Let's have them over for pizza. Come on. Let's have them over and tell them about the Lord Jesus Christ. Come on. Give the Lord a big hand of praise today. And when we come to the house of God, we ought to be able to warmly welcome those in the house of the Lord. Amen. Amen. And, and, and welcome them as friends and care about them. That's so important because, let me tell you, it's as we do things on the natural level that God can take those natural things and bring them to the spiritual level. Amen. That's what the Lord desires. Many years ago when I was in Bible college, and man, that was a long time ago. Graduated in 1982. Well, I was there. Two different people, one in chapel and one professor said this. He said this. He said, if you'll write out every sermon that you ever preach word for word, those guys said, you're going to be an amazing preacher. I said, well, I want to be an amazing preacher. So for the last 37 years, I've been writing out my sermons word for word, typing out every single word. That's 1,875 sermons or so, okay? That's a lot of sermons, all right? And what I discovered about three Three years ago, so I could put them up on our website. And so all those years, 
writing sermons have helped me to become somewhat of an author. I'm not boasting or bragging. This is in all the humility. I'm amazed by some of this. But let me tell you, I've got one article on our website that has received 5,100 and plus hits on that one article. Amen. I've got six other articles that have over 1,000 hits on it. I've got another nine articles that have between 500 and 1,000 and I'm just getting started. What's it going to be like in 10 years if Jesus doesn't come back? I'm just here today to tell you that God blesses those things that we do in the natural realm and He can take them into the spiritual realm. Come on somebody. I believe this with all of my heart. Amen. You say, well how does this affect me? Let me tell you, if you have a class that you teach, don't be discouraged if there's only one student. Amen? Amen. Amen. Don't, don't, you say, well, it's only one student. I'm just going to kind of, you know, I'll wing it. I won't really prepare. Don't, do, don't take that attitude. No, sir. What we do in the kingdom of God, if there's one student or two students, let me tell you, you prepare like you're going to be teaching about 5,000 students. And you walk in there, and let me tell you, as you take care of the depth of your ministry, God will take care of the breadth of your ministry. Come on, somebody. I'm just here today to tell you that God blesses the natural things. It's a natural thing that when you study, to show yourself to prove unto God that you'll become a workman that can rightly divide the word of truth. Come on, somebody. God is able to do these things. Amen. Be faithful in the natural things. Amen. David first had to be faithful in tending the sheep, obeying his father before God gave him opportunity to rule a nation. Let me give you another truth to ponder. It is as you are faithful in natural things, that you will receive and you will, it will produce confidence in you. This is so beautifully illustrated in the story of the life of David as a young man. He was brought before the king with this harp. You would think that a young man before a king having to play all by himself, you know, he would, have, he would have been nervous. But no, David had confidence because he'd been faithful in the natural things. Let me tell you, when you are faithful in the small things of life, amen, it will cause you to have confidence. And it is when you have some winds underneath your belt that you will feel confident to take on the giant. I love 1 Samuel 17. I wish I could preach David killing Goliath every single Sunday, but I can't, all right? But I get to today, all right? It's one of my favorite chapters in the Bible, and it's an amazing chapter because, you see, David is simply doing what he'd always done. He's simply running errands and running a favor for his father, doing what, he's, doing what he always has done. And he comes to Ephes to mean, and he, he looks over there, and he sees, you know, the Philistines on the other hill, and, and he sees Goliath down there, the nine foot tall Goliath and he's cursing God and he's challenging the people of God and nobody has the confidence to go out there and fight this giant of a man and David hears his threat and immediately he says who is this uncircumcised Philistine who is insulting the you know our God like this and, and he says what's going to be given to the man who goes out and fights this Philistine and, and someone says well you know the guy who fights him the king is going to give him his daughter he'll never have to pay taxes again and and David says well where are where where's a little brook at I need to get some sling some stones for my sling amen you know he had confidence and some would say well he was just a naturally born with that kind of confidence oh he just took a big risk and he went for it and he made it let me tell you this was not even a full-grown man yet in that very chapter first Samuel 17 Saul and Goliath himself call him a little boy in this chapter I I contend that he had that confidence and that ability to believe the Lord because he had already lived a life of faithfulness and that faithfulness had produced victories. You see, you can't take on the giant until you first take on the wolf and the bear and the lion. Come on, somebody. I just believe that it was his confidence that came from being faithful to the Lord. How in the world does Steph Curry shoot with such confidence all the time? He's practicing, right? 
A student sits down to take his exam with confidence. Why? Because he's been faithful to adequately prepare. A man on the job gets a raise. Does it surprise him? No. Why? Because he's faithfully done his job and more. He's been faithful to even keep his attitude in line. A son leaves his house for the very first time with his friends. They're going somewhere. Mom sits down on the couch and relaxes. She's not worried or concerned about her son. Why? Because she's faithfully taught him the precepts of the Word of God. I'm just here today to tell you that faithfulness produces confidence come on somebody if you want to have confidence in life just be faithful in the little things be faithful in the small things be faithful to get up in the morning and pray be faithful to read the word every day be faithful to be on time amen to whatever you're doing come on oh I'm preaching good today preaching to myself too amen let me give you the last thought today faithfulness opens up bigger and better doors. That's really the point of the message I wanted to get to you. Had David not been a faithful in his shepherding, faithful in obeying his father, faithful to gain confidence by killing a bear and a lion, David would have never been prepared when a Goliath stood in his path. And of course, you know that the day after David killed Goliath, and he stood there with Goliath's head in his hand, and he held it up like that, the people were saying, who is that young man? Where did he come from? How did he get there? Where did he get that strength like that? I'm just here today to tell you that God will raise you up if you'll be faithful in your life. God will open up doors for you that you never dreamed of. You say, Pastor, I'd like to own my own business one day. Be faithful, my friend. Read, study, believe, trust. Do what you have to do. And I believe that there's a God that's big enough to kick down any obstacle that's in the way. Amen. Be faithful to do whatever work is required of you. I believe today that God is calling us to faithfulness in the natural things of life. Amen. Faithfulness to work out. Okay, I didn't get any amens there. I was trying to be faithful. Tweak my back again this week. I'm not going to quit, amen? I'm going to keep going. Faithfulness. Faithfulness. In your home, faithfulness in your marriage, to always be there, to always do what you say you're going to do, faithfulness in paying your bills. That goes on and on and on and on. Those things produce things in your life. You see, it might be that you're just over at Walmart one day and you run into that one who's going to be that special somebody in your life. It might be that you're just at a restaurant one day and you faithfully are speaking to somebody and you meet somebody who has an influence in the way that let me think God uses the faithful things of life and God's looking for a faithful people would you stand with me today amen thank you for just letting me preach today